it is um, it's Monday, uh, September 18th. Um, Monday, September 18th, uh, 2023. We're here at the John Hugo meeting room with John's online tonight. Thank you, John. Uh, there's Robin, um, Don, Sasha, and we have one guest, uh, Colin, right? Um, so you're here to first in general public comment, Colin? Yeah, I was also just hoping to get an update on the comparison for like. Uh, okay, what was the comment or what was the update? Uh, I was hoping to get an update on rubber bears specifically platform. Um, um, well, we hit off Ward Brook Road? Or we hit off Ground Floor. Oh. Last yeah. I saw Martin, he said he was coming up to do some more repairs before the snow fell, but I haven't seen or heard from him or step on. All right, so neither of them are, are here. Uh, we're working with. Um, Ray, who used to be on the board, we've hired to work with FEMA okay. um, to make sure things are are moving along. But they are. Let me just. Sorry. Oh, um, sorry. I'll have them reach out to you okay. and let them know, give you an idea of what their schedule is. Great. We're not um, such that we watch out every little thing that they're doing. No, no, of course. I just, yeah, I don't know. Trying to make out of the stuff. Sure, and usually, actually, yeah. Stefan's online uh, with us or. Um, if I know, I usually call and get an update from Mark. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, I, I knew Cheryl was working to get some funds from FEMA for class four stuff, and I just missed the last two meetings. So I yeah, no, appreciate uh, it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Colin, is there um, actually on your way out, if you don't mind leaving some contact information yeah, from you on the where you signed in? Yeah. And that way we can make sure that you are Thank you. Uh, getting the information or what you need. Where you email or phone? Uh, Probably both. That way, let, let him choose whatever is easiest for, for, for them. Yeah, whatever yeah. Yep. Uh, anything else? That's it. All right. Well, thanks for coming. Um, and I don't see anyone else jumping online. Um, and so there's no public comment. We have Clark coming up in five minutes or three minutes. I haven't seen him. So why don't we go ahead? Um, Callie, do you have any reports? Sasha. Ah, uh, Jesus, I'm sorry. <laughs> Sasha. <laughs> um, I got the tree that's on the mountain road that's been in question for a while um, scheduled for October 10th. Great. And that's all I have. Tree down October 10th. And that's the uh, tree over on the other side. Lots, yeah. right? Uh, tree hugger, no. Snapping turtle. Yeah. Snapping turtle, I saw that. Uh, Robin, what do you, do you have anything for us? Uh, no, just one thing on the, for the uh, minutes of last week uh, on Don's thing. I thought they were going to use 2500 of the Merck funds for the survey and then the remainder for the event. Well, no, I mean, some or some, some of the remainder yeah, for the event. Then, right. yeah, it no, doesn't we, really read that way. So. Yeah, and we met with Dara, and okay. we we're working on some other. Uh, that was the only thing I had on with the old business kind of stuff. All right. Um, I'm going to update that, I guess. Good. Uh, Don, have yourself. Um, well, should we wait for Clark and I'll go after that? or? Okay, we're well, just, we're just doing the right, so, um so oh, Clark is actually not Clark's on right now. Oh, okay. Because okay. I was about to launch, but okay. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> hey, oh, Clark. Mad Dog. I'm right? thinking of him, right? And, um, do you? Trout or something? I don't know. Trout. Trout and Lemon. Mad Dog Trout. Oh. Hey, Clark. He is muted. Does it say oh, off or on? Speaker is something. Ask me. Oh, I don't know which. Oh, there he is. <laughs> I know, tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least be this close yeah, to the yeah, screen yeah, and then yeah, take a look at yourself on it. What the hell? Holy crap. Are we going to look that way? 
Donna, I've been through it. Believe me. I always say when I look in the mirror, I'm like, no wonder my body feels like this. Well, the mirror is <laughs> Hey, Clark. Hmm. Oh, there he is. Hi, <laughs> right, Clark. How you doing, Clark? Hey, folks. Hey, Clark. Hey, John. So we've got John online. We've got Don, Robin, and myself, and, and Colin. Colin, what's your last name? No. No. Colin No. Uh, that's in. Orca Media. So uh, go ahead and share what you got. Talking to me? Yeah, I am. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, uh, we might be joined by Caitlin Cusack. She's with Vermont um, uh, VL, Vermont Land Trust. She's the forester who oversees the town forest here uh, for the for that. Um, so yeah, um, just wanted to give you an update. Um, I think you're in the warrants today. You'll probably see an invoice to pay Otter Creek, um, or in which of which we will be reimbursed. Um, I think it's a little over twenty-two thousand. Um, it's the first invoice that actually passed muster with the state in terms of getting approval. Um, I met with Cheryl Lynn this morning, along with a couple of folks from uh, the Clean Water State Revolving Fund, just to make sure that we knew how to go through the reimbursement request process, which is pretty straightforward. Um, and the, we talked in the past in the board, actually, Tom, um, you may have asked about this a couple of months ago about, you know, why shouldn't we just go ahead and pay them? Um, but the loan hadn't, we hadn't, got, excuse me, <clears throat> we hadn't got the sort of official okie dokie at that point, which we have now. Um, so I would um, ask the board to, to uh, approve that and sign the warrant tonight for for that and uh, Cheryl Lynn, uh, we can put in reimbursement requests once a month. Um, we just actually, hold on just a second. Let me just check something. I just barely got another message from, um, from Otter Creek and I just wanna see, oh, okay. So it looks like um, they also are sending us an invoice for $900. So the, and we can put in um, once a month, we can put in requests for reimbursement. So um, what I would recommend, and I'll send this along to Tom and to uh, Cheryl in um, the invoice amount um, of $900 to go with the $22,000 and change that that Cheryl in has already. Uh, does that, I mean, does that make sense? You guys have questions about that? I think so. Yeah, it makes sense. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. We haven't paid them a dime, or let me put it this way: there hasn't, they haven't gotten a dime for this project yet. So, yeah. um, it would be great to to tr finally um, take care of that, so we can kind of move on. Um, the other thing I can update you with is, uh, as far as the test pits go, um, um, VLT did say that they were fine with dig digging the pit, the test pits up there. Um, they had they're luke well they're more than they're not really lukewarm at all. They're they're kind of cool about actually putting a system in, um, but they are they they um, they did say it was fine. Um, I know that the select board gave permission to do that in the past. There's Caitlin right there. Um, so hey Caitlin, this is Clark Amadon, um, right here. <laughs> hey Caitlin, and. Um, um, I'll let Tom Martin um, have the uh, introduce the select board, and then uh, your timing is good because I'm just now kind of getting into the test pits and talking about VLT and the easements and stuff. Um, thank so, you, Clark. Uh, yep. Caitlin, thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, online, in the select board, we have John Bogabu. Uh, so if you've done any business in town, you probably know John. Uh, sitting uh, to my right, we have Don Wexler. Um, He's uh, another select board member. And across from me, we have uh, Robin um, Campbell. Campbell. Thank you, Robin. And I'm Tom Martin, uh, the chair of the board. So, Clark, if you want to go ahead and continue on, or, or Caitlin, is there anything you would like to uh, share with us as you enter the meeting? Caitlin, maybe you could just talk um, in broad strokes in terms of, um, because this would be good for me too, your responsibilities with VLT in terms of these easements, in terms of how, you, how they stay you know, the oversight of, of those. 
Yeah, well, right now, um, so when I first joined VLT about eight years ago, I would have been the primary steward for this easement and then a number of other, all the easements in the Matterer Valley and then a lot of Orange County. Um, my my position has shifted a bit. I'm a forester. So any harvesting that happens on conserved lands in a much larger area, um, I will review and approve the management plans for that. We're in a little bit of a funny place here, um, at least in the Valley, and that Liza Walker, who I'm sure many of you know well, she left VLT this July. Um, and so we have just hired um, a new, her replacement. Um, his name's Mead, Mead Binhammer. He grew up in Brookfield. He'll be starting October 16th. So Mead will be your new contact for VLT. So because of my familiarity with this property and supporting towns in their management planning, I'm, I'm, part of this, you know, kind of standing in to help support the the committee that's updating your management plan for your school and town forest. Okay. Um, so wear a couple of different hats, but we are in a little bit of a transition. So when Mead comes on, I'll be working with him to come up to speed on um, the town properties and other properties in the conserved properties in the valley. Okay. And what's his last name? Ben Hammer. B-I-N-H-A-M-M-E-R. Okay, great. Cool. Thank you. That's great. I'm, I, um, Liza was uh, a great person to have in the Valley, a great resource, and many of us knew her well and worked with her on projects. So it's great that she's, uh, uh, I know she's moved on and looking forward to meeting Mead. Um, so, um, Caitlin, what I was just ex um, explaining was that um, the, the select board, as I think I indicated in a, in a message to you, that um, had approved um, digging some test pits in the upper part of the um, the uh, the easement, um, probably about oh I don't know three or four hundred yards um, downhill from South Hill Road, and we walked that with um, the fellow from Birdseye um, uh, Consulting Forestry, as well as uh, a couple people on the committee that are, have been working on their forest management plan. Uh, to take a look about whether or not that's some maybe worthwhile taking a look at for a site for the um, for an in-ground uh, wastewater system. And so the, the, we had talked about with the select board, they had agreed that this might be a good place to look for different reasons. One, it's the town, town already owns it. Um, the soils look promising. And, and we knew that uh, with the easement there that uh, there are a lot of unanswered questions um, uh, to, to take in. Um, and so, um, and Caitlin, just, you know, after I mentioned this, feel free to jump in and either, um, you know, share your perspective on this if, if I happen to get something uh, somewhat um, off in terms of reporting out on our conversation. Um, Caitlin and I spoke um, a little while ago, just making sure that we understood the, the questions about the easement and what might be possible there. Um, and it was Pretty, it's pretty clear that when you take a look at the the language in the easement, that um, a system like this um, doesn't appear to be something that would be um, in line with with what's possible. Um, and so my question was, you know, how how much further can we take this in terms of um, taking a look at, you know, you know, might we try to figure out a way that if there isn't any other site within more town that looks promising that this might be something that we could take a look at um and the other thing caitlin that you had asked which i don't know as i mentioned um in a subsequent message that um i've asked a couple of engineers about any um trees that would have to be removed in order to get a mini excavator in there to do the work and the what i got back from three different people is that would not be necessary so there wouldn't be any need to remove any trees you know there may be some forest de de debris that may be on the on the floor of the forest that would need to be moved in terms of doing the test pits but they obviously would be you know filled back in when we're done and then and then uh, put back as close to what it was before um and just to get back to the um um the possibility of of a system there um that it seemed you know not something that would be um you know, at the top of the list at this point and probably at the bottom of the list. And so, Caitlin, maybe you can just kind of talk a little, you know, what you mentioned to me in terms of, you know, um, you know, what 
what the issues are with the easements and also um, whether there's any um, light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak. Yeah, sure. Um, well, Clark, as, as we had spoken about, you know, of course, VLT supports a project like this. It's, you know, addressing water quality, addressing another, many of the town's concerns. Um, where we're limited is by the words in the legal document that, um, you know, we, we hold and steward that easement. Um, so, you know, I think when, when you look at the easement, first, we look at what are the primary purposes of the easement. And so, this, you know, in this case, you know, primary purposes for conserving the property, protecting, maintaining, or enhancing critical wildlife habitats, so the deer wintering area, um, conserving forestry values, um, wild cultural educational values, recreational values, those are all our primary purposes. Um, so it would be whenever a request um, or an activity is proposed on a conserved property, that's that's one of the things we and our partner, the landowner, think about. How does it fit with the primary purposes? And then for a specific activity like this, which is you know a pretty significant um, use or change, we then think about, well, is, is that allowed in the permitted uses section of the easement, which is section three? And so, you know, in, in some cases, you know, this type of activity, uh, you know, a, a community can think, oh, we, we actually might need something like that. So in, in that case, they write it directly into the easement, which is great when that happens, right? Because then we can say, okay, so we've actually, we've, we've thought about this and this is how, this is the process. You know, in this case, we don't have that. Um, so there's, there's, that's not you know, written in the permitted uses. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's why, you know, Clark, I said, you know, if, again, as it sounds like, you know, no trees need to be removed, digging the test pits, you know, there's, there's no problem there in needing an approval. It's just, you know, I wanted to have the conversation that it would be really difficult um, for us to find a way to have this type of system be installed on the protected property. I'm not, I, you know, I, I said, I'm not saying no, um, because, you know, we don't have the details, the design, all that, but just in looking and reading the easement, I'm not finding a way where we um, can see that being a fitting with the, you know, the purposes and what's been outlined, you know, in the easement. Mm -hmm. um, you had asked, I know about, you know, can easements be amended? And the only ways that, you um, the the we are allowed to um, amend easements or to add acreage. So in this case, this easement was amended in what would that have been? Um, let's see, that would have been 2011. It was amended to add the additional acreage um, to the to the property, um, and then we can add we can amend easements to add more protections. So we can't remove protections to allow for you know impacts or that sort of thing, but we can add protection. So the a main way that that looks these days is adding an overlay of a river corridor easement on top of our existing easements. Mm -hmm. okay. And I don't know if folks are familiar with those. Some of those have happened in the Valley um, and other places in Vermont. And this is basically is an easement that um, a, a landowner, you know, gives up their right to armor their armor, their stream banks to protect their land and that is allowing that river to meander which may or may not meander and remove land you know impact land um and so that's in the end the idea being it's attenuating floodwaters um as one of sort of many many um benefits of those that type of protection um so you know in this case that would be you know, so that wouldn't be, you know, an option in this case. So then we would have to find a way within the written um, document of the easement to, to figure out a way to, that this project could um, be allowed on the property. And that's where um, at this point, it's, again, we don't have the details of what you're proposing, but, mm -hmm. you know, just wanted to have this conversation initially so we could all um, just be aware of some of the challenges. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's thanks. That's, um, you know, right along the lines of um, what we talked about the other day. Um, and, uh, you know, it's being able to, to have test pit data will allow the engineers to, you know, to offer some, some engineering designs and that sort of thing. So that at least we'll have more data and more information to take a look at later on. 
So that's good. Um, and so Tom or any of the folks on the board, any questions, comments at this point? No, I do think it's good that you've joined us though, Caitlin, you kind of level set us where we're at. Um, you know, we can come back with a great test pit here and then be very disappointed. Uh, so I think the expectation up front here is uh, to really uh, take our time with this and, and don't assume anything, even though we may own the land. Um, but that's, I guess that's my, my comment. And we'll go ahead and, and do the test pits, I think Clark, um, and then we'll, you know, we'll see what type of uh, you know, system that we're, we're looking for. Well, can I ask a question? Sure. I mean, does it, from hearing what Caitlin just said, does it make sense to do the test pits? I mean, we don't have land that we can add. And I think could, if we took land out, is that an option that we could take some of the land out of the forestry management easement program and then be able to do a system? No, or is that, uh, you know, no, forever? Said no, sounds like. But I'm just wondering, I mean, we do the test pits, under what scenario are we going to be able to put some kind of waste water system on land that's protected up there? Well, that's kind of just what she just said. They don't know until they have the data from the some test some information. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I mean, I, I do see your point. Do we even bother going ahead or not? It's, it's already dropped to the bottom of, li of the list. It's just based on that consideration. Is it worth the effort to go forward? Yeah, I don't know. Right. You know, I guess my my perspective on this is that if we have right now um, the the other thing, and, and I um, was just about to mention this when when Caitlin joined. Um, the, one of the things that's delayed doing any test pits at this point is that Otter Creek has to have consulting archaeologists take a look at the sites. Um, and if you're if you have uh, grandkids or kids that are looking to go into a um, a career, I would suggest archaeology these days because uh, it seems to be a, a, a these days you know a guarantee of income and being very busy. Um, so they haven't been able to get consulting archaeologists to even take a look at any of these things yet. Um, however, um, their consulting archaeologists did take a look at the Stevenson property and it came back as sensitive. Um, I'm asking Robert what that means. I suspect that means sensitivity in terms of archaeological find potentials. And I'm not sure whether that means um, it, it's not worth digging there or whether we should or whether we can. So I've got to confirm right. that. If it means that it's um, to a certain extent somewhat off the list, um, then we're basically down to the site that's up behind the school that's now the site for the school wastewater system and the easement. Um, so you know we're, our, our options are beginning to to, to fade here. Um, so <clears throat> yeah, you know, and that doesn't necessarily mean that we're um, we're done looking at sites as a, you know, as a matter of fact, um, the Morfest discussion came up that there's um, uh, a site just beyond where I live on 100B. Actually, Donnie, it's sort of across um, from you where the, that double wide is set back in the, on that meadow um, on the other side of the river. Um, the soils there look really good uh, and the size of it is, could be big enough. So oh. we're gonna probably take a look at that as well. So anyway, that's that's an aside. But I want to, you know, since Caitlin's here, I just want to make sure that, um, you know, that or that I don't at this point, Caitlin, have any other questions for you? Um, I'm or comments. Um, you know, we're I, I think that getting having the data from test pits is useful um, in the long run. Whether or not you know it ends up turning into something, I don't know, but it's information and it's data that we can use. And, um, and you know, it's it's a relatively minor disruption, I think, in terms of the, the yes. property. So, you know, I, I would certainly would like to move forward, but. Um, I, don't, I don't see any reason not to. It would be reimbursable under the rest of the grant anyway. Correct, that's correct. Well, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and and we've been sort of um, indicated that it's probably pretty safe archaeologically uh, in terms of. Yeah. Now, if it turns up, you know, somebody's um, co you know um, coffee pot from you know 1910 or something, I don't think that can can 
you know, establishes archaeological sensitivity. I think we're looking at like pre-contact stuff. Yeah. So, you know, we're, we can find an old, you know, bed frame buried there and it's not going to, you know, hit the archaeological sensitivity part. Um, Caitlin, is there any, any other comment or questions that you have for the board? No, I think um, Clark and then, you know, Michael Brown, who was originally connected with me on this, have, have laid things out pretty clearly. So appreciate, you know, reaching out early and starting the conversation early. Um, and, you know, please, as as you progress, reach out with any questions or let me know if there's anything we can do to um, help with the process. Um, yeah, I mean, we'll certainly keep you posted in terms of, um, you know, as we move forward to dig the test bits, I don't want to just kind of plow in there, so to, so to speak, not literally, but um, figuratively plow through there and, and get the mini in there. Uh, we'll keep you posted. And when did you say Mead was joining VLT? Mid-October? Mid-October, right. Okay, okay, yes. great. So I'll loop him in at that time and we can work together on it as he comes. Up That's great. Speed. I'll probably reach out to him as well uh, around that great. time too, so. Great. All right. Thank you, Caitlin. Right, okay, thanks, thanks everyone. Yep, have a good That's night. Much obliged. Yep. All right, bye -bye. Hold on, Clark. So, John. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, what's your thought, John, with the test? Uh, I think that uh, we should continue to explore or all options. And as Clark said, I think it's 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 just uh, a good practice to um, you know check check things out thoroughly and. Uh, you know, the other information that it will provide us, I think would be helpful. John, are you all right with that? Um, yeah. All right, so Clark, uh, I guess carry on. Um, okay. Pits. Everyone's yep. thinking census yeah. here. Yeah, and um, um, the, the spot that, that I mentioned, um, I looked at the Vermont parcel viewer and it doesn't list the owner for that property that's across the river from you, Donnie. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, and we haven't as a committee yet talked about whether or not to actually check in with them, but, um, I think we probably will. Um, I, it's within the, 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 the radius in terms of where a system can exist. Um, so that's good news. Um, the, the, uh, if the soils came back great, one of the biggest dilemmas there that would add cost to the system is either going you know, over or under the river in order to get the pipe over there. Um, Cause that's, that's not an insignificant part of the, of a project that would be located there. Mm -hmm. So. Clark, can you give us um, kind of a timeline going forward? Now we have, we have the pits. Um, at some point we need to pour it out to the town here. Um, mm -hmm. When do you see that? Well, you know, for, for, yeah, for, for months and months, we've been waiting on, you know, digging the test bits. And, and as I mentioned earlier, a lot, you know, these are the archaeological uh, clearing is a, is a, is a big deal. And it's really hard to get people to do that. So we've got, I hope that they're working on the other places at this point too. Um, so when those are cleared, um, I'm pretty sure that we can dig because the, we can't get reimbursed for a project that hasn't been archaeologically cleared. Um, and so that's why we've not done it yet. So let's say that, you know, by let's say a month, you know, the end of October, the test bits have been done and, and the da data is available. Then we can start um, setting up a time for a public meeting. Um, I was hoping that a public meeting might be able to happen sometime by, you know, before Thanksgiving. This is a couple of months ago, but that's certainly probably not the case. So I'm, thinking that it'll probably be, you know, winter time, January, early February, something like that. Um, and then certainly obviously pointing out uh, or um, talking about it at, at town meeting as well. Um, but, and a public um, forum is required as a part of the, um, the, the zero interest loan. So that has to happen after the 60% report from Otter Creek. Very good. Any other comments from the board to Clark at all or questions? No. All right, Clark, people, thank you for joining us tonight. All right. Thanks, everybody. Nice thank to you, see Clark. you. Clark.
Take Thanks, care. Sir. Good night. All right, Dom, so you were going to unleash on us, if I remember right. All right. Okay. Um, just a little update about the uh, sidewalk scoping study. Right. We had our monthly meeting. Uh, when was that last week? So we've actually, uh, one of the most recent things was accomplished was an on an archaeological study, because they have to do that for that area as well. Yep. And uh, they didn't find anything, I mean, that's of a, a concern in, within the sidewalk range. There's some stuff that, you know, some historic findings from the, like, 1800s type of thing, you know. Uh -huh. I mean, because that was one of the, from some other stuff I've read that they've gone through over there, that was one of the earlier settlements in Moytown. And I never even realized, uh, I won't get too into the weeds now, but you know, on Route 2, there's a cemetery there that's yep. behind that. And there's some, you know, some really, uh, some people who are resting there who are some of the early settlers of Moytown. So, oh, wow. I mean, I can't roll off right. the names, but it was just kind some of- Some early dates yeah. there, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then just what was going on there before the 1927 flood and what came in after the talc right. business that was there, the business, yeah. you know. In any event, um, so they've they've accomplished that and they've actually got, and I I forwarded uh, the most recent notes today that I got from uh, the engineer okay. um, to Sasha, I'm so she can send them along to you or something. And um, so they've actually started with some layout. You know, it was as to the sidewalk and some size, and you know what um, would have to be some of the items that have to be dealt with. The long and short of it is, the next step is coming up will be this alternatives meeting, which they're maybe shooting for of November sixth, which would be a, a select board meeting night. Um, but I, and so during the meeting, I suggested if they're wondering what the venue would be, if it was actually possible, and I haven't had a chance to follow up on this yet, to see if there was a way to have the meeting be in that neck of the woods, so to speak, so that we could maybe get more attendance. Um, so I have a couple of contacts in the Gallagher Acres neighborhood, so I've traded some phone calls with someone who's also working on the road, helping with the road safety okay. stuff. And uh, so, you know, I mean, obviously we can still have it here and, you know, we have our Zoom, people can Zoom in, but um, they are up for that as well. I mean, maybe we could have it at the school or it doesn't necessarily have to be on a select board meeting night, but it might be yep. just as well. I was, actually, I wanted to throw it out there, what you guys thought, you know. I think it would be good to have on the, that date, but you know, whatever works, and yeah. be over there or whatever, it doesn't matter. Okay. Well, at least we could, we'll have more time to at least get it out to folks. Right. Than the last time, it was kind of right down yeah. on the wire when we were able to. And can you explain the alternatives meeting, what that is a little bit about? The alternatives that they're going to show two different, um, two different sidewalk sizes, basically. Okay. You know, and how it lays out to the road and the spacing. Right. And, Which side know. of the road? And, no. Well, no, no, it can only really be on they, the road. Yeah, the, I think um, they figured that out early. early yeah, it can't go on the it other was side. It was just going to be width, the size. Yeah, you know, whether, I mean, they had two scenarios there that curves, we actually, Chris. curves and stuff. Yeah, that Chris Hunt and I, when we were just looking at some feedback there, they had one, like, 10-foot drawing of a, what a, a 10 foot impact would be because that right. was like a multi-purpose yeah and we were kind of going well there's way too much disruption with that scenario mm -hmm. and it doesn't match the sidewalk that we're going to meet up with on the other on side, the other side of the 100 yeah. and, uh -huh. so yeah. i think we're down to a five foot or a six foot wide um width of a sidewalk and, to, and what the you know what the grass you know separation buffer could be buffer zone. Right. So that's, so that's the alternative. That. Okay. Um, the road safety committee, you know, we've written that letter. We've got probably about 65 signatures so far on the two letters. Good. I brought it here tonight so my fellow board members could sign it. Maybe when we get into the sign mode. Our hope is to get like 100 signatures. 
We're also going to post it on uh, Front Porch Forum with a, you know, letting someone just like, this is a little beyond my MO. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we're going to write up a posting and then it's, there'll be a link to the to letters right. and then a Google Doc that people can sign. Can you explain so, again? Um, well, so the two, there's two letters that uh, this road safety committee, about six of us worked on, John as well. And one of them deals with Route 2, basically from the landfill to Gallagher Acres to the intersection of Route 100, mm -hmm. requesting that the speed limit at, around uh, be, uh, at the landfill be decreased to 40 miles an hour from 50. It's at 50 when you first turn, like from Center Road or Exit 9. Yeah. And so, you, you know, at there, it'll be slow to 40. And then you, when you get to Gallagher Acres, instead of being at 35, it would be 30. And as you might remember, they did lower that speed limit there from earlier when we went through the right. same process, but they couldn't lower it any, more, any lower than 35 because coming from 50, they couldn't go to 30. But we're it saying in this letter, with the, right. you know, there's a, lots, there's a lot of residential homes all on that section of Route 2. And it's pretty curvy as well. You know, and so anyways, that's the basis of that letter. Yep. It has a few other details in it. And then with the Route 100B, um, the main uh, focus of it is, is from Stevens Brook, where there's still a sign that says 50, yeah. that the speed limit would drop to 40 there. And then when you get to like Stephanie Venomers or just before the curves, it would go to 35 and then 30, 30 at Murphy Road or the bridge, right. you know, start the 30 into the village sooner and then follow through and then coming the other way or going this way, continue the 30 up by Camel's View Farm because right. it goes to 40, continue it to 30 and then at the intersect before the intersection 35 and coming the other way, we go to 35 just after the church or the crucified one, where it's 40 at the present. It goes from 50 to 40. So that's the, really the basis of the two letters, and then just asking for, <coughs> like on 100B going north, you see a 50 mile an hour sign at Stevens Brook, and you don't see another speed sign until you see a slow down to 35 at the dam. Yeah. So request for you know signage. just some maybe some additional signage and, and also you know some pedestrian and cycling cycling signage for all the runners and walkers and bikers that use the road. Mm -hmm. So that's essentially what the two letters are. We're you know we're not we want to you know see if we can get you know at least a hundred signatures on both of them. We got some folks working over in Gallagher Acres to get some kind of that Route Two area to get some signatures as well to show the Vermont Traffic Committee the support. And so, you know, if we get it in by late fall or something, you know, that'll be good. That's the update on that. Any questions, um, uh, John? Or anyone from Donna? I, I hit that right, John, pretty much? Yeah, I did. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds yeah. good. Uh, John has a copy he's going to do. Yeah, you know, different people on the committee are, you know, hitting their di different neighborhoods. Because it doesn't necessarily have to be someone who lives right on the road. We're, you know, we're yep. all Moortown residents are affected basically. So, so um, I know that the uh, speed machine has been down on 100B. Yeah. Now, will you use the information from that? To yeah, the I, I, yeah, we. I'm sure that'll get forwarded on to the. Oh, in this. The yeah, scenario, well, yeah, we could do that as well. But we just usually we're sharing that with the sheriff's department. But going well, we forward, to... we could probably look at that data. And Definitely, see. yeah. Yeah, that's great. a great idea. Thank you. So yeah. give them some incentive to why people need to slow down. So yeah. You start getting Gales. people going into Gallagher Acres. The same with 90, <laughs> you know. Yeah, it's 100B. I mean, if they're not. Oh, yeah, no, we are going to move it over to Route 2 as well. So, yeah. You know, we could use that data. We could coordinate that with submitting the letter. Here's the data for. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think that would, that would be, that would be great. great. Yeah. yeah. More than hearsay, here it is right here. Yeah, 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 here's, yeah, the, yeah. here's the backing up, backup data. Where else we got done?
Okay, just a little uh, town hall, little update. Um, one uh, is we're, tr we're working on having an event there on 1014, Saturday, October 14th, from 4 to 7. There'll be like a small energy fair. Um, I think Clark is going to I'll come and have some information about the clean water and there'll be, you know, local, some more town folks, a little local music and um, local food. Some people are going to just, you know, do some food and we're going to have information about, uh, you know, the town hall project and just kind of like basically an open house socializing kind of thing. On the 14th? On the 14th, yeah. Um, and so let's see, in the uh, um, revitalization, you know, in the project status, um, we're working towards, uh, and I realized that last week when we approved the aim and go ahead with the survey, that you know, we didn't sign the person's proposal. I went over it today with Cheryl Lynn about that she's got to get a COI and a W9. Yep. But hopefully she's, it's not a survey, I shouldn't be using that word. So it's a, a topographical survey is what we really need to establish, you know, some of the grades around the building and the water flow, yep. and, you know, and the fact of how it's flooding from the way the water comes off the bridge and off from the from the mill and from the others, from the 100B and all that. So that's going on. Uh, and that's set to start on, on the 25th, which will be a, which will really be good as, in terms of fitting into the schedule of finalizing design. Right. Um, and then we did get, uh, we sent out that RFP, as I mentioned a while ago, for the construction manager approach to the project. Um, we got back. Um, we had three people, we sent it out to five firms, we had three people attend a walkthrough and one ended up getting another project and had to withdraw. So we've gotten two proposals, um, which we just got Friday, so we need to do a whole sort of Good sussing them out yep. you know, and comparing all the different aspects of it with, along with the RFP. Okay. Kind of but um, I just wanted to just float it out there and hopefully when we come back on the second, we'll have, you know, some like, okay, here it is, here's the nuts and bolts of the, the two proposals and what they propose to do. But um, it's going to be in somewhere in the range of like $7,000 to do this, to, to proceed this way. Versus you know, if we just finish the drawings and get a, an estimate, a, an estimate, a one time estimate, that's like between three and five. So the, the, I don't know if you want me to, at this point in the meeting, get into like what the benefits of the construction manager are, which I can do or send a note to everybody so you can read some bullets about it. Okay. But what I wanted to ask is that, um, is there any way, if we know we're down the road, we're applying for all these grants, you know, these two major grants from the libraries and from, uh, from Merck, you know. Yeah. Is there any way that we could, that we could borrow money from the, you know, like the town could lend the, some of the money to go to that CM thing and then the town gets paid back once we, you know, the project gets underway and we have grants and, you know, it pays back for this piece of, you know, design slash, you know, project management kind of thing. Each, I just, I don't know. Yeah, is, I, I is, think is that's that, something we can any, look has into. Has that ever been done? I don't know. I was just I, trying to, you know. Not I mean, we, we are cranked up on, on another note. We've cranked, we have a capital campaign committee. Mm -hmm. uh, we have two or three people working on that, you know, that we're going to launch probably late fall, you know, uh, you know, reaching out with some different ideas to raise, you know, raise some money that way as well. But I just didn't know if that, has that been done, or if that's a possibility, or, or what? You know? well, it hasn't been done that I recall, but since I've been 
Why yeah, it I don't remember. It doesn't preclude it from being done. Yeah. Um, it's something God, that do you mean taking from the savings reserve, borrowing from it? Or yeah, some some. Yeah, we we, <clears throat> we can't can't do that now. There's not enough there to do that. Oh, okay. It's we uh, because we uh, pledged that for um, the greater. Uh, yeah. For borrowing for taxes. Oh, all right. For tax loan and tax. Mm -hmm. Which is you're saying seven thousand dollars, right? Let's look at it. I I would suggest that you do send out something pre-meeting if you could on the. Um, I know we sent the RFP out, but give us a little bit of heads up on what that whole out. thing would do. Right. What it okay. Would do. Yeah. Um, okay. So then that way we can come in and you know, I mean spend time. Okay. Doing that part, and then you can sell us on the line. Okay. Great. Good enough. And then. Uh, Let's see, another, I just wanted to, this is from an email that um, Sasha sent us that, to thank a uh, flag man, Danny, you know. Right, Danny Hughes. You know, that was great that, you know, and he's been able to do that another year of flying old glory, so to speak, right? That's right. And um, then I just want to have, this is kind of an old chestnut, but I was thinking, because I um, saw, bumped into this gentleman the other day, but what any update with uh, Frank Piazza and the uh, apartments? No, you know. um, I spoke to Ron about a week and a half ago about that. Uh, we are going to, yeah, we're going to uh, contract or right? talk with the judge at some point just to kind of give them a, a heads up. But we're at a standstill of trying to find a, someone that's willing to come in. I've spoke to a few different people about it and there's no one everyone's too busy and, and then when they say well what do you need and then you tell them and they don't want anything to near it no. uh, because it means litigation eventually is um, he still being fined like this yeah i mean that's fine that's still every day it's being something? fined and that's adding up and that's something that the town could just go to the court and say all right we want to enforce this right. uh basically bring him into Probably bankruptcy, and you know, and ended up and ending up with the thing. Um, not something we really want to do. But and he doesn't. If he doesn't have to pay it yet. I mean, until the court mandates. Until the it court or, mandates yeah. it, that's and that's something that, and it really doesn't mandate it until we go after the court to push them to mandate it. Because that's a, that and, was and, the and question I had. It's five hundred dollars a day. No, it wasn't that much, was it? Is I. It? I can't remember what the I can't remember what it was. I think it's way too much. Way, uh, it know, couldn't uh, be that, right? Because right. it's been like six months now. Or something. I think it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Robin, that's what you remember it being? That's what I remember, yeah. It's something. It, 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 is, it is 500. Oh, that's crazy. So, wow. Um, and the town, I think you were one time in your review, the town doesn't even, if that does oh, want to be paid, we don't even we don't see get any of that money. We don't get it. Right. 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 Goes to the courts, but of course, but we have to ask them to enforce their order. Right. Um, and we haven't done a lot of those things because what happens if we, we do something like that and then the property goes into whatever it is, but the people that are living there have no place to live. No, I know that. And so that's why we're, we're walking that fine line of where, how far do you push because we could have Dick go in there and probably. Um, put the place under, you know, have you know, not be so yeah, quarantine. quarantine. Yeah, really and uh, again, that would push the people out. I think Nicole, I, I, when I saw her the other day at the library, <coughs> told me that um, maybe one, one or two people have moved out or something. But, you know, but she's still, yeah, there's still so a couple of people. Did taxes out. get paid on the place? Oh yeah, yeah. The last Craig told me at the last minute, which was usually what happens when they're going to tax sale. That's, <laughs> what, that's what typically happens. Yeah. Um, so we will. Uh, you know, the going to wonder. You know, I don't know. It's like a, you know, Frank's a pretty sure. Yeah, he contrary goes around, around a circle. Oh, yeah, he puts so, out. <laughs> yeah, no, he's he's sharp in the throat, So yeah, so that's it's, unfortunately we have not been able. There's yeah. really no teeth in the law. Or there could be, but again, it, it means 
right. buy by for the tenants. So and that's yeah. what we're going to try to buy for the tenants. It's a shame with all the housing yeah. problems. Yeah. Too, you know, and liability for the town is what it comes down to. Yeah, what we'd yeah. like to see is, is one of these organizations come over and, and take those properties over and fix them up. Fix, fix them up, them up and be housing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Turn yeah. yeah. in uh, a nice place. And have some reasonable. So, there's so much demand and need for that right now. There's the real sort of snapping up apartments. So let's go ahead and uh, uh, no, just my last but not least is yeah. that just to maybe re re remind ourselves that we were gonna some at one point we were gonna have a a, a brainstorm a tri board meeting with the SB the PC and the DRB to kind of brainstorm about legal trails, you know, and and um, you know just. Yeah, you know, we have so many things, I know, but, you know, maybe to, I don't know when we could do that or how we could pull it off, but, you know, you no, know I, I, it's set for an agenda or whatever, but, you know. You know, you know what, I'm going to talk to Dave, as we're, uh, so I'll move on a little bit, um, with the Planning Commission, just about the zoning administrator, so we're trying to figure yeah, that, so maybe yeah, during those conversations we can figure out a time, um, you know, it's funny, you, we want to get the boards all together on that, but uh, like the DRB doesn't really want to be, because they're listening, they're kind of the judge of every, all this, so right, it's, right. he, John is, they don't, want has, to, they don't want to be making the rules, right, the judge, judge, right, at the same you know, time. like so, a referee in a football game, this is yeah, you thing. know, whereas I thought that was it seems like a good idea because they know <laughs> yeah. what works and what doesn't. But uh, he's right. As he was here one night, you saw his hesitancy to to kind of work that way. So right. I think it'll be us in the planning because again they're on the mm -hmm. planning side of things, uh, and we can look at that. But I think it's yeah it's overdue. I mean we have uh, a lot you know as. You know, we're talking about this housing needs. There's a lot of people going out onto the Colin Class Four roads, trails, and I think there needs to be some kind of a, an update as how those are treated, how we policy from the town, uh, you know, and how if one wants to you know bring up their their trail or right because we sort of deal with it sort of on a case by case basis, right? And some, and, yeah, and. and it, a lot of that's because there's doesn't seem to be no one case that's the same. I mean, there's right. something that's true. You know, there's it something gets triggered from something else, else, or there's some you know, easement on it. There's yeah. some something, so it lends itself to that. But I mean, if we could get a more straightforward policy up front, so that people weren't running into problems down the road, so everyone right. knew what the yeah. expectation yeah, is, at least know what to expect. That, exactly. exactly. So there's no. Um, Kind surprises of clarification of right. sure mm -hmm. um, so that is and I'll work on trying to get that scheduled mm -hmm. um, so going along with the, the zoning administrator stuff um, Sasha do you have the um, uh, uh, the job description that we've, we've had mm -hmm. maybe we send that along today that'll get him okay. You know, what he's thinking. Um, I spoke to Karen this morning. She actually has a candidate that's uh, she knows of that might have some interest. That mm -hmm. so she's going to. Um, she would like that uh, job description. So, so don't send it out to her yet, but send it over to Dave. Ask him about it and see if that's something that he wants to use. Um, it comes from the planning unit, so you can send it to Karen. Mm -hmm. um, so Karen gets done next Tuesday. Who or uh, so there's going to be, um, I think six or seven things in process, uh, and I know sh she's going to send you a list. Yeah, she, 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 already, she reached out to me. She, she sent me the list. She's going to uh, give she's, you. Hopefully, a, we could set aside an hour of her office time. Does she meet here? Is that where she does her office hours? Yeah. Okay. So next Tuesday she will be here, but I would reach out sooner than later to set up a time with her? Yes, I just reviewed her email and I said she has office hours tomorrow. So I, I said tomorrow would be great because that works out better for me than next week. So if she has time tomorrow Perfect. and responds, I'm, gonna, I'm hoping to be with her for an hour tomorrow, kind of go over the list, 
mean, I know the general process because I've applied for permits and things like that, but obviously right. I don't know the finer details about grades and blah, blah, blah. And all that kind of stuff. So she's I didn't realize you, that's, you're going to step in for a little while. I'm not necessarily out. stepping in, in no, but I'm going to at least become help. abreast with, yeah. you know, I am the liaison to that department, so I do want to step in and at least have how, some right. kind of general idea of the workflow. And yeah. So she's she's going to send a letter out. Okay. Um, and so we will have you as that contact person. Okay. So, because all these people, again, they don't want to, as you had things in your life you don't want to be lost in the process right, right of course so these people um if they have questions concerns um they're going to have your contact information okay um to reach out to you and it'll be your responsibility to um if you get something let sasha know let me know or if there's questions we're not going okay. to be um list uh giving any authority at this point to to do uh permits to do the permits but right at least we can we can keep them drb decisions come down we can right you know, or send out notifications you can follow or things or things are just supposed to be followed up okay. a lot of it's um people kind of over things all right this is what you okay what she asked um and you start seeing that stuff and then that's something that um, we can review together as a, as a board or a few of us okay. make sure everything is included um, because there are certain limits and statutes that give us days to have this stuff Okay. completed if everything is completed uh, okay. uh, um, the way it should be so okay well that's my uh, intent on that so so be on the lookout for that yes, stuff you. okay thank you Rob. and yes thank you and just to follow up so i did last time we had um a, a mr Barr that had come in i don't know if you were here uh, that yes. had the yeah. issues with the permits um so they're going to be in front of the drb next week good um she was he reached a, out. I reached out to him personally. No, no, I was here for that. All right, you yeah. I reached out right. to the bars personally and spoke with my own personal attorney, and I make a recommendation basically that they proceed with the DRB, which is apparently what they're going to Well, uh, so be careful of whom. Um, I, I just told him it was just my, my personal opinion. But um, the decision she the is. Uh, and she did not mind. have to allow them to go to the DRB because the problem is. is they did not, um, she asked for a couple documents and it was very clear and they're just not providing them. Yeah, I just basically told them so that in light of her, you know, resigning that I recommended that they basically bring whatever they had to the DRB. Right, and, and that would be the, that's the normal process that they go, right. they go through the zoning administrator and to be sure mm -hmm. that everything is there. So yeah. she's allowing them to go to the DRB and at the DRB, they can request uh, a variance in not providing these documents. Okay. So it will be up to the DRB whether they allow it or not, which I would imagine they will not, um, because they're very simple documents. Um, one is a uh, because it's being built on a slope. They need a, a an elevation. I, I made no recommendations other than no, just that you. Karen was resigning, and I thought just if they wanted to proceed, it would be in their best interest to try to you know proceed with the drb because they, right. they're very fair and they would give them whatever information right. that they were needed you know and again she, that's the, the whole process yeah. but my uh, my impression was that it was yes they were just kind of at odds with her and they just didn't want to provide something that seemed to me to be fairly simple right. so so anyways that's where that is okay. um sasha thank you I, I asked sasha to reach out to the state uh, on our sidewalks out here, or the sidewalk out here, there's lots of um, dirt and debris kind of up against the sidewalk and growing under. And oh. also the grates were a little bit um, filled, filled up or, yeah, or just not, plugged on top. Draining. Sasha, and you, you had a response from Michelle? Yeah, Michelle, yeah. Michelle right back to me and said that she had some new notebook. All right. So, Let's make sure we follow up on oh, that. Well, something along that line of the stick is that I've been wanting to just tell Martin about it. Or I've, never, I've never had that much luck going down in the state garage on an issue or something like right, that. Yeah, at 0.01 and, there. But here, um, well, she got between the two uh, Hurdle Road um, entrances yeah. on 100B, yeah. there's a washout 
that um, I don't know if anybody knows about. I've, you know, I see it when I've been biking, but it basically goes back into July when we've had all the rain and stuff. But it's, you know, you can, it's yeah. not good, it, you know, so I don't know. But that's something that she, it's on um, the riverside. And, you know, it's, it's getting bigger, yeah. you know. And my fear is that it's just underneath them. Right. Someone's going to fall in there, or a yeah, car, yeah, or a truck. Or sure. Yeah. <laughs> you know they will eventually. Yeah, yeah. no, I mean, it's, it's not a Should she give you any? Did she give you any indication of who, because I, I agree with Don, I've been down the garage a couple of times, and they, they don't seem to uh, respond to any of our requests. Yeah, no, I mean, I try to go in and just like, hey, I'm on the Moortown Select Board. I noticed such and such on the road, and they go, oh, okay, you know. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's yeah. a good idea because yeah. they they don't have this have a sense of um, well, they urgency so much. You know, yeah, probably, but there's yeah. I mean like this stuff that's hanging out. I mean, by if you go into the middle sex, you know the where the stop sign is next to the roots and things like that. Yeah. It's the same way in the intersections. I mean, it's they're full of dirt up against the. There's things growing. It's been that way for years, and the the guy that oversees that lives right there. <laughs> You know, and so there's no sense of pride of how things look. You know, it's too bad. Um, they could do a little bit more, but yeah, thank you, Sasha. On my soapbox there. I've been seeing it for the last couple of weeks going. I gotta uh, get some. So we got the zoning the board. Um, also, like um, the more fest. I want to say that was about done. I caught. I uh, went out of time, Robin. We didn't see you there eating cookies and all. And no, I missed the cookies. No, I was. Able to attend. Uh, some, uh, I ate his. John ate plenty of cookies for us all. I, I, I ate Robin's. Yeah. <laughs> okay, excellent. Uh, <laughs> so they're coming in. Um, it's becoming bigger and bigger. Um, so they're coming in to get a little bit of groundwork from us, or they're going to bring some maybe some guidelines because they, they had a lot of interest, uh, vendor interest. Um, and just so there's some. You know, in case people move on, on and, and then you have some guidelines and just how it's, how it's going to work or how it should work. Yeah, it's a great thing. It really yeah. is. Yeah, it seems like everyone. Yeah, I'm really sad. I mean, this wasn't able to attend. I mean, you see, I mean, I think end of life issues with the kids. I mean, I've never seen so many kids. I know. It's more life that we have. That I know. You know, yeah. yeah. you know, got the families in town. You know, you talk to them and they were, you know, all these, most of these people were from Mortown. Yeah, they were mostly fun. I went, you know, I was mingling around. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. I don't you read all this stuff about that there are a lot of old Geary people Asbury. around. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but you know, there are. It seems you know, there are it seems like there's lots of young people moving in Vermont. I mean, I guess the, the statistics and the numbers don't prove it out yet, but Yeah. Well I personally know some right younger there. couples that have moved to Moretown, you know, just yeah. recently from you know, nephews and nieces I mean, and stuff like that. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, it's, you can't afford to live in Jimmy yeah. County. Yeah. You know, more this yeah, they're coming here for the same reason we did. <laughs> That's why I moved here. Right. <laughs> it was St. Albans for 300000 or more <laughs> town for a hundred. It was a pretty easy to see. Well, hopefully yeah, we can. Yeah. <laughs> He's been here wow. for a while. Yeah. The good old days. In the good yeah. old days. Well, 25 years now. But we got to. But I own. I own the sixty acres I built on, so that was a big. Uh, yeah. That was a. That was a big selling point. <laughs> I should say. Well, it's important that we continue to uh, make it affordable for young families. Sure. Uh, we're trying to. Mm -hmm. That's what we start uh, for. Work this out. What we do here. So, I guess that's all I had as far as uh, mm -hmm. announcements and, and stuff. Okay. Um, let me just go down on old business and then well actually before we do that let's approve the select board minutes from uh the 5th of september uh yeah the only change is how, how do you want to word the motion for the uh his event the, 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 the proceeds right. necessary to sponsor for, your event yeah but for that in the in the uh topographical survey that's well, page yeah. two yeah. the first paragraph of page two so it's 2,500 of the 4,000 MERV grant towards the survey and a portion of the remainder for the 10, 14 grant is how that should work, I believe. Yeah, then there'll still be some other funds that we can yeah. put. Sasha, are you able to get that? Yeah. Okay. John, did you have any changes? 
Uh, yes, on the uh, road safety uh, letters. I mean, one letter was for Route 2, the other was for uh, 100B, uh, and that's mainly for lowering speed limits. And there wasn't anything on the, our dirt roads. Okay. Um, is that in there? Was that in there on the minutes, John? Uh, yes, it mentioned. Um, oh, it says a letter dirt, in dirt reference roads. to speed on dirt roads. Okay. Yeah. No, that's that's a, yeah. That's later. We'll be working on that. Right. Time. But just dropping the speed on. Okay. All right. And some changes. Mm -hmm. So, is there a motion to approve? Uh, I make a motion to approve the minutes with the change of that line. There's second. Second. John seconds. Thank you, John. All in favor, vote aye. 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 All right. Um, and uh, l let me, uh, you didn't get to me on the uh, reports and communications. I'm sorry, John. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Um, Guy Martin called and. Um, Who did you say? Uh, uh, Guy Martin. A week, week, 10 days ago. Um, to me. I guess according to Charlene, he's quite upset because he's waited so long to get into his property. Um, he needs he needs some work done to his camp. Um, now I I believe Mar Martin said in October he would be looking at cutting the trees, um, but I I definitely think that you know we've held off so long. Um, we, we've got to do something to make sure that guy can get in there. Right. I mean we'll. Uh... First of all, it's the trail is there, so he can go anytime he wants. Well, I think it has to do with getting vehicles up there, especially if he's got to get um, people up there to to work on his place. But uh, let me talk to Martin about uh, Martin Cameron about it when he can have a clearer view of when that can happen, John. Okay, that would be that would be good, um, and. <clears throat> Guy doesn't seem to think that it's at all marked anyway. So, I'm sorry. Sorry. I, Guy doesn't seem to think that it's it's marked, but I I, be, I believe it is. I mean, I told him, that, or I told uh, Cheryl Lynn that, as far as we knew, it had been marked. Yeah, because we had him mark. In fact, I think both sides of it. Um, uh, from the where the pins were, so that we knew. I think it was a, a lot to go back and look at the agreement, but it was a, it was a two rod, yard, uh, two, or two or three yard, um, but we can look and that's right. um, what it is. But yeah, it should be marked. I mean, that's what the survey was for. We spent a lot of money on the surveys. So, right. um, um, okay. you know, we'll go with, I think it would probably be wise to, uh, you know, a couple of us, probably me and John, we, we walk that enough. Um, we should probably go over with Martin when they start the cutting to make sure uh, that they're doing it and doing it to the survey so we don't have any problems. Right. That, that sounds good. Okay. Um, the next thing is uh, uh, Chris Costello uh, at uh, Morefest. He came up to me and he, Express concern and the junction of Moortown Mountain Road and Moortown Common Road. Um, the way that the logs are piled there. Um, he said that he's almost got into an accident. Somebody who came down Moortown Common Road and didn't really yield properly. And uh, so bottom line, he almost almost hit this person. Um, and so the visibility isn't very good there. And then pretty much that yield sign was there, but we put that there years and years ago, even before any stop signs were there. So we might want to consider replacing that with a stop sign. All right. Is there, what's the, um, how, or how do we go about doing that if we want to do that? Is there some kind of a 
We can put a stop sign wherever we want it. All right, so there's no statute that says we need to warn it or test or you know, have some kind of a... Yeah, so that's probably... Um, a good idea. Yeah. I mean, we don't have a yield sign anywhere else in town. So, I mean, I think it just makes sense to have a stop sign there. Are those logs, are they in the right of way at all? Or is he? No, no, they're not. I mean, and I've, I mean, I've come down, when I come down Moortown Common Road, I don't see it as an issue. Um, but I, I guess it's, I mean, I think there's a double issue. And the, uh, the main issue probably is people not yielding, right. you know, right. uh, yeah. or trying to cut out in front of somebody coming down Moortown Mountain Road. But um, I think having a stop sign just makes more sense. All right, we can, um, I'll mention that tomorrow and to have one ordered. Yeah, I mean, we've had one at the end of Jonesbrook Road that's come and gone over the years. It just good. takes it out because it's gone again now. <laughs> oh, no, really. People love a stop sign in there. Over there, oh, Martin uh, has told us that people do they steal signs. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Like Devil's Washbowl, that sign is just stolen all the time. John, anything but, else? No, he um Dale doesn't have any logs in the right of way or anything. He, he they're well back. Right. Yes, yeah, it's just fire. Yes, it is. All right. Um and that's all I had. And that's all you have, John. Well, that's a lot, but we appreciate it. Glad you're doing well and could join us tonight. Well, thanks. Uh, okay, we have some old business. Um, or it doesn't we we touched on a lot of a lot of the things I think that are down there or anything that we can do tonight. Unless there's anything that anyone has that's uh, new. I or you know what? I had a question that I was reading the min the minutes, whether it was this or the time. This was last time. Um, Don, you had stopped to the people. Well, I did. I was going to just bring that up. Right. And then it said, it said they may come in. Yeah. How did that go? It, it went well. I tried to tell them. They, and then I said, you know, it's a, it's a concern for your neighbors and people coming off the Pony Farm Road and the select board is concerned about it. And then they told me, as I mentioned that night, and then John told me, what the fact that they had met with the sheriff and the sheriff said that they were okay where they were. But then in the meeting last week or two weeks ago, John mentioned, well, no, they are, they're in the right of way. So um, we decided at that meeting that we'd have them come to a meeting so we could talk to them. And I, you know, I haven't seen them to tell them to come. I did mention that we'd like them to come because they'd like to ask us about the street light that's right there beaming on their house. So I said, well, we could talk about that too, if you come in. Sure. You know, so I don't know if we reach out to them through Sasha sending a note or calling them or Does it make I've sense? just been trying to drop in again. To, yeah, no, know. we should have them, but we also, um, and I remember last fall something, I don't know if I was here or, or something with the sheriff and the sheriff had mentioned something of about it being okay and I just don't see where that's okay at all so should we get clarification from the sheriff about what he was thinking there or John do you remember that conversation were you involved in that yeah. yes uh, I mean he said as long as you stayed on the house side of the their, their mailbox you know I mean and, which is ridiculous you know, it's still in the roadway um, so um, but we probably when the last letter we sent out to them, um, I believe we did mention that that you know even though the sheriff said that um, that uh, it's in the right of way and especially in the winter how dangerous it is. Yeah, I mean let's have them in and then you know, talk about. Yeah, it. I think that's the best way. Yeah, to just ask them to come. In, you know, don't you know? And I, I think in the letters we suggested they could but i mean i think it's time that they do yeah. so i mean we can't force them to but you know either send them another letter or just 
Well, just, I was wondering, if Sasha, if you, if we know who it is, if we could send them a letter uh, to one of the next meetings coming up, give them a couple of options, uh, time and dates, and tell them we'd like to discuss it. If they choose not to, and then we'll just send a registered letter that it would enforce, um, you know, safety. Yeah, I, when I spoke to them, I think they, I think they'll come. In. Good. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I was actually, when I biked by there yesterday, because I was looking yeah. to see if they were there, I was hoping they could even come tonight or something, you know, a public comment. And I was kind of looking, it seems like with a, a little bit of work, I mean, there's some rocks that have to be removed, but it looks like it was a built, there's a built up sort of area right there that they could utilize to get over more. That doesn't, yeah. you know, I mean, I haven't walked it or anything, mm -hmm. I'm just looking at it as a stop waiting right. to go out. I'm just I'm wondering if that could be a solution that they could get in a little bit to their land right there. Yeah, I mean, it's all it's again it's all in the name of safety. I mean, yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. I mean they're you know, God forbid someone get hurt but then it'll, it'll be you know, resting on them. You know, and it would be <clears throat> expensive for and also and I'll also look to see if I see them when I you know, Do you know what their names are? Yeah. No, he told me his name. Right? <laughs> All right. But, sorry, Sasha, I think information must be sent the letters out. So, yeah, so we can go ahead and do that. Um, other than that, I think we're we're good here. Is there any other? Is there any new business that anyone has? All right, so we just have some um, a warrants to approve and sign. Just make sure you all get your vaccines. There's three of them you just have to get, you know. You can get them all at once. What'd you say, three? The other one, yeah. RSV. The regular flu, COVID, and RSV. RSV one now, yeah. Is that what you have, RSV, or do you have? No, I had RSV uh, in December. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> second COVID. Oh, okay. Oh, so I wonder, the last time I spoke to um, Martin, the Mac, I don't know if you know, the Mac truck blew another head gas or another head, so it's back in the shop. Oh. Yeah. What's that? Okay, I can't even know it's back. Say again? Yeah. yeah. The Mac thing. Oh, no, that's too bad. So he's talking to the the rep because I mean we're losing you know or he's losing a lot of time you know this is a driving back, back and forth I'm well, driving back and forth but we have nothing to use for it. Uh, you yeah. know we're, we're actually lucky um, that it's not winter that it's not winter yeah. it's that we have three trucks mm -hmm. so but. Um, any word on the on the graders coming yet or not yet? Nothing. No. Okay. It's uh, I think Stefan has been tracking it though. It's tra coming from Brazil or something. What? No. Yeah. Being it was being um you know it was here. Is that really? Is that possible? No, I mean some components are coming. No, no, no. I mean like all the components were sent to Brazil. And, Assembled there. That's wild, isn't it? Sure is. I always wondered how they can make. 
make any money shipping a dustpan from <laughs> China to uh, they seem to <laughs> be where they all come from. John, I think, um, or maybe you have more information than I did, but I was following through the easement after you left, got it to the um, Shems, the engineers who worked on it, Ray had it back. And so I, um, right. you signed this one? assuming he was getting it signed. Yeah. yeah Sasha, have you heard anything? Yeah, sorry, sorry about that. I, I, I forgot. To mention that um so yes so as, as far as we know every everything we all the changes were made so i believe it's it's back with um howland and i i think he's probably having his lawyer just look at it and make sure that everything's okay make sure we made the changes that they were all right yeah. so But the work looks real good, you know, where they put the evaporating ponds in and everything. Yeah, they're doing a nice job. Gra right? Gravel wetlands, yeah. Thank you. It doesn't really need anybody. It doesn't need anybody. I think you got everything signed, John. Thank you for coming. Don, you all okay. signed? No, I've just got the letter here. In the All right, I move to uh, adjourn. A second. second. Uh, All in favor, vote aye. aye. Wait, I think you need to do something. I think everyone, have a good night. Yeah. I don't know.